3,000 feet up in the mountains of Washington, it's the Annie Oakley of the Airways. Ready or not, here she comes, Dr. Lori Ross. How do you begin to introduce Carl Gallup? Reverend Carl Gallup, former law enforcement officer Carl Gallup, investigative journalist. Oh yes, and in his spare time, best-selling author with number one books and fancy schmancy books. And he's a real pastor. He's not a poser. He doesn't just go on American Idol and try to sound cool. Oh, look at I carry my Bible. Go sit in your Maserati and dream that God gives you this car. He's actually the real deal. Okay. So those are just the hors d'oeuvres with Carl Gallups, and he has put out a DVD we're going to ask about and his latest books. Carl, welcome back. Dr. Lori, thank you for that, uh, for that, in for that uh, introduction. My goodness, I, I, I don't know if I can live up to all that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, uh, that's just the beginning of who you are. Uh, where do we begin? Uh, the exchanges, the Obamacare, you have to be rolling your eyes when you look at uh, all the things going on, is this going to bite the Democrats and Obama in the 2014 elections with all the millions of people truly suffering? And it's just beginning. Dr. Lori, I don't see how it cannot. I mean, I, I don't wish ill upon people who are losing their insurance and their health. I, I really don't wish ill upon <laughs> relatively innocent Democrats, and I don't know how many of those there are, uh, but but who really their 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 legacy and their um, service is going to be ruined by this. I don't see how it cannot uh, cause some devastation among the ranks. But uh, this is a debacle. It's a it's a constitutional travesty. I'm using those words because I remember the very first time I met you, Dr. Lori, the very first show I was on with you several years ago, that's how we opened up. We were talking about Obama years ago, and you asked me for just a general um, you know, understanding of this man, and, and my answer to you was, he is one constitutional travesty after another. And here we are again, watching it unfold before our eyes. I don't know how this cannot come back to bite a lot of Democrats. So this is the story that we're forced to live in. We can't just be spectators anymore. Everyone, I know too many people already who've been dumped off their insurance policies. Some of my guests have. Some of the business owner guests I, I know have. I, I would fully expect my husband and I to be dumped off his plan from his employer uh, in January. I mean, this is hitting us all. So this is a nightmare we can't live on the sidelines with. People are suffering. Care is well going away. Yeah, well, you're right, Dr. Lori, but listen, here's the upside of it, and it's a sad upside, but here's the upside. For years, you and I have been doing what we have been doing on the radio and in the public, and I mean, you ran for public office, and I'm out front with the P.P. Simmons News Network, et cetera, et cetera, and you and I have been maligned and lampooned and lambasted and laughed at and mocked and ridiculed and marginalized, or at least attempted, uh, and and we've been encouraging people, stay engaged, stay involved. We're not lying to you. We're not tricking you. This man is evil. <laughs> He's surrounded by evil people. He has evil designs for this nation. And again, we were called racist and conspiracy theorist and tenfold hat. But watch. But now it has hit the pocketbooks of millions, tens of millions, tens of millions, maybe going into the hundred million and more in the months to come, and now people are getting it that you and I were not crazy. We were not conspiracy theorists. We were not tinfoil hat people. We knew what we were talking about. We were just ahead of the curve, and, and we were engaged. We were patriots long before it was hitting our pocketbooks, but I'm thankful to have people along who it's who finally are getting it, even if it's only because their pocketbooks are being hit. When we come back on the other side, I, I have you for about 50 minutes, and then you have another meeting. Uh, I want you to tell the folks step by step about your DVD, and you know what DVD I'm talking about that that brings up a certain name. Quite fascinating and quite factual. We'll be back. Hold on tight, you know she's a little bit dangerous. We're talking with 
political activist, best-selling author, Reverend Carl Gallups. He does his own show as well. He's into everything because he cares about his country, and God and country in that order, not fame and country, and then God when we feel like it. No, boring already. We don't want to do that. Carl, you have put together a video uh, looking at the original language of Jesus and Aramaic and Greek and things, and uh, you've put together, and it's a factual thing, uh, what have you discovered? People can make up their own mind. Folks, when I heard this, I about lost my mind. I've listened to it uh, many, many times, and you figure out what you want to figure out, but this is the facts. Carl, tell us what you found. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I can't believe you want me to go here, but, but we're going to go here <laughs> because it is it is uh, pretty sensational. It's um, uh, very, very uh, interesting, and it's controversial because, as, as your audience will hear, when I explain it, there are people who are, especially those that are just in the tank for Obama and those that want to uh, lampoon in anything a Christian says, uh, who who will um, you know who have jumped all over this? But here's the deal, Lori. It has to do with the scripture in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, where okay. uh, where where the Bible says that he that is Jesus and Jesus said unto them that is his disciples. He's talking to his disciples. I'm setting the context here. So Jesus said unto his disciples, "Quote: I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven." Okay, that's the King James translation. It's English. Of course, that's not the original biblical languages, but that's the verse. Luke 10, 18. I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Now, I, I want to be very, very honest and transparent with your audience. I am not the original discoverer of these word correlations. Um, someone else did uh, several years ago, and it was brought to my attention. I do believe I'm probably the first person to put it in video format, and we put it on P.P. Simmons News and Ministry Network site uh, some several years ago, and it went viral. I mean, overnight, it just went all over the world, went all over the Internet. And, of course, people have mistakenly identified me as the originator of the information, and some people have given me praises for it, and others have sent death threats to me. So, <laughs> but I just, yeah, but I just, I just want your audience to know that, that I'm not the one who discovered these correlations, but I did report on it in video format, and I did research the correlations to make sure they were accurate and correct, and as a matter of fact, they are. Also, I want you uh, to be reminded, Dr. Laurie, you and I have talked about this, but I want your audience to know that um, when I posted this and it went viral, it made several mainstream news uh, media presentations. I think Rachel Maddow was one who keyed in on it. Uh, I, I, she didn't know who I was. She didn't call my name, but she named, I think she named the P.P. Simmons site, I think. But I do remember them keying in on this video and playing it, and there were a couple of others as well. And then Salon.com on the Internet. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you you know they they picked up on it and just opened it up for all manner of comments and trashing, and they even employed the services of a Jewish rabbi to refute it. Now, what's interesting after he did that, I made a video of everything he said and put it up on the internet. It went viral because the Jewish rabbi, in attempting to refute what I said, inadvertently I know he didn't mean to. But he actually validated what I said. And when I show people the video of him validating it, they freak out. Because now, not only have I got it in video format, and I have validated that these correlations are factual, but this Jewish rabbi who's trying to say that I'm nuts winds up admitting that the word correlations are exacting. Uh, but, but, you know, what he wants to say is, but, but however, it can't mean what what it looks like it means. Well, maybe it doesn't mean what it looks like it means, but it does say what it says. Now, whether, yeah. it, whether it means what it says or not, it's a whole different story, and that's up to people to decide. But anyway, you want me to cut to the chase and tell your audience what it, what it is? T tell, tell the folks uh, what you discovered from the original language, the, the words that, that it actually says, and they can, you're right, people can interpret whatever they want, but the facts are the facts. That's right, the facts are the facts, and that's all. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Well, the, when you interpret it into the original languages, it would appear that there is some kind of cryptic warning that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. <laughs> I mean, it does. Now, I don't claim that. I have never claimed that publicly. Nope, um, 
and and this video does not claim that this video just is what it is it presents the word correlations it was a sensational matter of fact and that's what P.P. P. Simmons does. We deal in matters of fact and, uh, and story. So anyway, okay, it's Luke 10, 18. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Well, that's English. Well, you know, most of the, uh, uh, the New Testament documents we, we know have come to us in the format of Greek. However, there is a whole school of theological and scholarly thought that believes that the earliest, earliest of the New Testament documents were more than likely written in Aramaic. And we would feel very very clearly that Jesus and his disciples would have at least spoken in Aramaic wherever they're quoted in the early Gospels uh, because that was their native language. Now, Greek was spoken in the early, you know, the first century in the Roman Empire and some Latin as well. But uh, more than likely, Jesus would have spoken these words in Aramaic, which is an, an extreme, extremely first cousin of Hebrew. So a, a lot of people just use Hebrew and Aramaic um, synonymously when they speak, and I may do that in this conversation, but for, for, the, for the language scholars out there, I'm well aware that they are not the exact same language. The best example I can give of the relationship between Hebrew and English, Dr. Laurie, I mean, excuse me, Hebrew and Aramaic, is like British English and Southern U.S. English. It's the exact same language, but very different words and inflections and accents. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so Aramaic and Hebrew are very similar to that. comes from the origin of the very same language, but there are some differences. Anyway, bottom line is, if he had spoken it in, in Hebrew, Aramaic, he would have said, and I beheld Satan. Now, now Satan, that's how we say it in English, but in, in Hebrew, I think it would be more like Satan, because Satan or Satan is a Hebrew word. That is a Hebrew word. It stands alone just by itself. And and says, I beheld Satan as lightning. Well, the Hebrew word for lightning is, guess what? Barak. Barak. B-A-R-A-K. Now, I know that's not the exact spelling, but, I mean, there it is. I beheld Satan, Satan, as Barak falling from or from heaven. The Greek word, I mean, the Hebrew word there for heaven, there is a word for heaven, Shamayim, but in the context, not only in the Greek and Luke, but also in the context of, of what Jesus is talking about, there is a different word that would be used that would speak to Satan falling from his domain, from the, from the domain of Satan, from the heights. We, we read about the, uh, the, 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 evil, uh, the evil forces being in the heights. Um, and, and, and so the word for, for heaven in that sense, the air, if you will, or the domain of Satan, the, 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 um, the spiritual domain around us, not God's heaven, but Satan's domain, the Hebrew word for that, is Bama. Now, so we would come back, if Jesus were, spoke this in Hebrew, he would have said, I beheld Satan as Barak Bama. But what's even more interesting is there's that word from in between, fall, falling from or from, and in Hebrew, there, there is an inserting of a, a singular uh, sound, which is often translated as U or O, or ah, so it, he would have said, "I beheld Satan as Barak Obama, or Barak Obama, or Barak Obama." So, I mean, I mean, it's amazing. It's just you know, people say, "Well, you're making more out of it than you should." Well, I'm not making anything out of it. I'm but, just I didn't. Mean, when Jesus was talking, though, when he talked about Satan falling from the heavens, he was talking about. The character of the Antichrist falling from the heavens? Well, th well, that's what a lot of people think, because, see, Satan coming to the earth, mm -hmm. if, if, you know, in the form of humanity, many Bible scholars, of course, equate that with, with an Antichrist figure or Satan uh, indwelling a man in the last days who he's given this these supernatural power of deceiving the world and everything he says is a lie but people believe it and and truth is thrown to the ground the scriptures tell us and he causes astounding devastation wherever he goes and he attacks christians and jews in the final days and actually brings down all manner of tribulation yeah the antichrist satan indwelling a man and that satan's um uh what's the word a counterfeit of the christ in other words who was jesus christ 
but God with us, God by the Holy Spirit indwelling the person of, of Jesus Christ. So Satan's counterfeit is him indwelling a particular person. And so a lot of people have looked at this scripture long before these word associations were made as Jesus giving a prophecy of, of seeing Satan falling uh, to the earth from heaven as lightning, I mean, on fire and mad and, 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 and ultimately defeated. So anyway, that, that's up for the theologians to, to argue those fine points. But the bottom line is, if Jesus had spoken this in Hebrew and had kept it in the context of Luke chapter 10, verse 18, with that word heaven, uh, because you see in, in the Greek, the word for heaven is oranus, but the first definition of oranus is the air. And that same word is used in Luke and other places, speaking of the birds of the air. And in that particular scripture, the birds represent demons in the context Jesus is speaking of. So, so there's just there really is very little argument that the word is oranus, which which Hebrew equivalent is bama. So, the the word the word correlations are there. Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as Barak u bama, and. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's but fun. Ask you, but, I mean, you, you've been very careful. I mean, that's what it says. Now, does the Bible say anything else? Does Obama, uh, does he feel the requirements of Antichrist as to what the Bible describes in your view, uh, other than just this uh amazing revelation you just shared i mean yeah. uh doesn't the bible also say that the antichrist will prefer men uh he'll come in on a wave of peace and he'll be almost very new agey he'll be the guy who tries to fix everything he'll he'll be very he'll he'll be very charismatic won't he he'll be he'll fool and beguile a lot of people yeah well let me answer your question you've asked an honest question not only is it honest but it's very very popular I get asked this question all the time and these questions are all over the internet it's amazing I'm gonna answer your question but it is amazing I have never declared that Barack Obama is the Antichrist neither have I declared that from my pulpit I've not declared it in writing I've not declared it in video format what I have done however is to examine the scriptures and to look at some of the characteristics of the man uh, as identified by the scriptures and then just let people, you know, kind of study them and make their own decisions. Now, now people have attacked me and said, yeah, but you didn't do that with George Bush. Well, actually, I did, but the world wouldn't know about it because I was doing it from my pulpit and in Bible study groups, uh, but not on the Internet because at that time, P.P. Simmons News Network had not been born. So... No. I mean, P.P. Simmons News Network came into existence at about the time Barack Obama was running and then eventually became uh, president in 2008, 2009. That's when P.P. Simmons was born. So, no, it looks like, you know, that that I'm out there just trying to make him out to be the Antichrist. And, and I'm not. I have never done that. I'm just listen. Here's the bottom line. And I'm going to get back and answer your question, Dr. Lori. But here's the bottom line. The Bible says there will be an Antichrist, right? Mm hmm. OK. So one day in some generation. There is going to be an Antichrist. The Bible also says that we are to be watchful. We are to be mindful. We are to know the season in which we live. So it's my job. I don't care if people like it or not, Dr. Lloyd. It's my responsibility as a man of God, as a preacher of God's word, to examine the times in which we live. And when yeah. I see things that don't line up, I speak to them. Now, I'm careful. I don't just go out there and make wild accusations. Um, I back up my, my statements with Scripture and with fact. Uh, but, but it's just amazing, you, you know, the people that now I'm labeled as that preacher that has called Obama the Antichrist. I'm, I'm labeled that way all over the Internet. And never in my days have I ever said Obama is the Antichrist. I have never said that. But anyway, back to your question. I'll tell you what Obama is. He is an Antichrist. He is a depiction of some of the characteristics of the Antichrist who is to come. It could be in the future that we'll discover that he fits all of them, or it could be someone else. But I'm telling you, there are many characteristics that he displays, and we'll talk about them after the break. Yes, and I want to ask you about your latest book on the other side, uh, about the rabbi. That's unbelievable in itself. We'll be back. We're talking with best-selling author, reverend, talk show host, 
You name it, he's done it. Former cop. You know, what can I say? Carl Gallup. That's who it is. Carl, in our last uh, segment together, because I know you have another meeting, I want to sh shift gears yet again. But first, where can people go lay their eyes and make their own mind up with the Aramaic and the Greek uh, and those words you just shared. Where where can they go to read that, see that video? Yeah, well, go to Carl. Well, go to uh, all right. That's a good question. Here's the easiest way: go to youtube.com forward slash pp Simmons. When you get there, click on the video section, and then there's a search box. So you can search the videos and just put in this title: Did Jesus give us the name of the Antichrist? And then you can watch that video. From that video, there will inside that video, there is a link after you finish watching that video that you can click and watch another video wherein I sh uh, show how that rabbi inadvertently confirmed the work that we did in the video. Uh, his name is Dan Ehrenkrantz, by the way. I went and looked him up and, and quite a, uh, outstanding in his field. And, and he literally says in the article, and it's all this is uh, cataloged and verified in the video, that if Jesus had used... The, the Hebrew words uh, for lightning and the heights or the domain of Satan, it would be pronounced B Barak u Bama. I mean, he says that. That's a, that's a Hebrew expert, a rabbi, who was trying to dispute what I said, wound up agreeing with what I said. And uh, it really infuriated a lot of people when that article came up. But uh, that's it's what they do. That, it's something that in this day and age is certainly worthy of knowing, and we yeah. can... Yeah. Imagine what it would mean later. Okay. I'm